the Titanic, famously known for sinking because she hit an iceberg. But what if I was to tell you guys that that wasn't the only reason she sank and that there was more to it? In today's video, I am going to be telling you all some really interesting facts about the Titanic that the media really covers and some conspiracy theories. So let's get right into it. Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel for a whole new series, the RMS Titanic. They call it the ship of dreams and for many it was the last one they had. The Royal Mail Steamer is what the RMS Titanic stands for. She was built between 1909 and 1911 by a company called the White Star Line. She was 882 feet in length and 175 feet in height. The Titanic had a crew of around 900 people which was astronomical for that time. She was marked to set sail leaving Southampton on Wednesday the 10th April 1912. She was heading to Cherbourg in France and then Queenstown in Ireland before heading west to New York City, her final destination. The Titanic was famously known as the unsinkable ship. She was given this name by the designer Thomas Andrews and he said that the Titanic would be unsinkable as long as the 13 stabilising walls in the bottom compartment remained intact. Now these 13 walls didn't only hold up the ship, they were really, really important. If at any point there was any water going to get into the ship, these compartments would close and it meant that the water would be confined, meaning it wouldn't spread to the rest of the ship. Now what if I was to tell you guys that 10 days before the Titanic set sail, she was on fire. Fire versus water. To power a ship this big, they needed a crap ton of coal. So a little fact about coal is that sometimes it just likes to combust. This is nobody's fault, it just goes up in flames. The firemen were the people who was in charge of making sure that this coal got into the furnace safely. Now 10 days before she set sail, some of the coal randomly combust and it actually ignited all of the coal. Now not to be mistaken, they never actually got this fire down to a reasonable control, but they were able to see the damage that it had caused already. So one of these supporting walls actually became warped and bent, and you could see it from the outside of the ship. Now if I was to show you guys this picture, what can you see? Most of you are probably saying that you can't see anything, right? What about if you look a little closer? Now I know some of you will be thinking, Declan, this is just the photography back then. This is what the cameras were like. They left little splodges everywhere, you know, little lines all the way through the pictures, like these vintage filters in this day and age. Wrong. This was actually the damage that this burning coal had caused on the outside of the ship. Now, this was insane. This just goes to show how warm this fire was, the fact that it burnt through the entire thickness of the ship. So they fixed it. And by fixed it, I mean they made it look pretty. Now, the company really couldn't afford to waste any more money. Which leads me to my next fact. The company was sinking. Now the White Star Line was one of the biggest companies at the time. They had everything going for them. They had the best ships, but other ones were starting to come out, mainly by Cunard, which was their rivalry company. And Cunard was coming out with better, bigger, nicer ships and this really badly affected the White Star Line. Now I wasn't there, but I can imagine this is how it went. The company probably sat down and said to themselves, right, nobody wants to come on our ships anymore what we're going to do. So they had the brilliant idea to say, right, we need bigger, we need better ships, we need more fancier ships. And that was when the Titanic blueprint was born. They were going to launch a mothership. The Titanic took around two years to build, so this company had dedicated all of their time into making sure that this ship was going to be the best of its kind and the one and only of its kind. Now, speaking of one of its kind, there was one one ship in particular that was kind of similar. Meet the Olympic. The Olympic was a sister ship to the Titanic. She was ordered a year earlier than the Titanic and she cost a whopping $7.5 million to build. The exact same as the Titanic. Now the only difference is the Titanic was actually three inches bigger, not that big of a deal, but she managed to steal the world record for being the largest ship in the world. Now a popular conspiracy theory on the internet is that the Olympic was actually switched with the Titanic. So let's dive a little deeper into this theory because it is really interesting. Proof to back this theory up is that when you compare the two ships, they look identical, except a few minor changes. Now the Titanic and the docking station versus when she launched looked a little bit different. And to be fair, 
she looked more like the Olympic than the Titanic, and by this I mean certain things had moved. Now the company was in dire need of savings, so they really did not have time to be pernickety about all the little details about this ship. Plus, usually once things like this had been built, it was kind of permanent. Little differences had been spotted, such as the name that was printed on the side of the ship, the Titanic, had moved several inches to the side. She was now under a different porthole than she originally was in the docking station. Portholes and windows had also moved. Now the Olympic had been in a crash, so this was a huge blow for the White Star Line because they had spent all of this money on this ship and she had just been badly damaged. Now she did not exceed £125,000 worth of damage, so she did not get the insurance money that she needed to be fixed, which meant the White Star Line had to take it out of their own pocket. And to be fair, they they really didn't have it anymore. Now the Titanic on the other hand was insured for $12.5 million just a few days before she set sail. Now to put that into perspective, if you didn't think $12.5 million was a lot, that is $160 million in two days age. So this meant that they were going to get the big bucks if anything happened to the Titanic. Another thing that was damaged during this crash was the propellers. They actually ended up taking the propellers off of the Titanic and put them on the Olympics so that they could get her out there and set her sail and start making some money and again not waste $7.5 million on her. This actually ended up postponing the original date that the voyage of the Titanic was meant to take place and the company really couldn't afford for this to happen because they were going to basically annoy a lot of people. Now many believe that they actually switched the ships and they'd done this because they did not get the insurance money for the Olympic so they dressed her up as the Titanic, kept the Titanic safe and put the Olympic out to set sail to sink. And this meant that they were going to claim the $12.5 million for the Titanic sinking and the company would be magically saved. Now the reason that people find this so fishy if you pardon the pun, is because even though the Olympic was really badly damaged, she was able to serve a further 24 years at seas. Now this is actually really unique because ships don't tend to last that long, especially ships that had already been really badly damaged. Now for those of you that are sitting going, oh Declan, that sounds so fabricated, that sounds like you're making up a story, almost like a book. Well it's weird that I bring that up because there is actually a book and it was launched 14 years before the Titanic actually sank. The Wreck of the Titan, and yes I said Titan, not Titanic, is an 1898 novella written by Morgan Robertson. The story features the fictional ocean liner the Titan, which sinks in the North Atlantic Ocean after striking an iceberg. Sound familiar? Oh, there's more. Even though this was written 14 years before the Titanic actually sank, the comparisons are un- real. Both ships hit an iceberg in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at the exact same time. Midnight to be precise. The Titan sank 400 miles away from where the Titanic actually sank, but this is the really weird part. When the Titanic sank, it split in two, and as it went down, it landed in the exact same place that the Titan actually sank. The Titan also never had enough lifeboats. They hit an iceberg going at the exact same speed. The Titan held 2,500 passengers and the Titanic held 2,200 passengers, but both had the capacity to hold 3,000 passengers. Now I cannot even explain how weird that is and how accurate that is, so I'm going to leave you guys to think about it and I'm going to move on to my next fact. The ice field. Now, during the voyage of the Titanic, she was given warnings that she was going to enter an ice field in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean by other ships that were already there. So she was told to slow down. Now, they didn't slow down because they thought, listen, we're looking out. I can see. There's nothing there. You know, we're just going to keep watching. Now, there's a reason that they done this. It wasn't just because they thought they were smart. There was a reason. Now the actual reason why they were using their eyes is because they did not have the binoculars. The binoculars were kept in a locker in the Titanic. The only man that had a key, David Blair, didn't actually feel well the day of the launch of the Titanic and he left the key in his shirt pocket and forgot to give it to somebody else. Now this was actually just classed as a minor detail. This really was overlooked with everything else going on. Nobody was caring about where one key was. Now you're probably thinking it was a really stupid idea for them just to rely on their eyes because it's the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, it's pitch black. You'll also remember me talking about how the White Star Line was actually in financial difficulties and there was a reason that they did not slow down. 
Now at this point there is some good news. The firemen way down at the bottom of the ship had finally been able to shovel all that coal into the furnace and they had closed the door. Now because they had to shovel all that coal into the furnace they didn't have any spare which meant if they had slowed down and brought down the propeller speed they didn't have any coal to power it back up. This actually meant that another ship would have to come and rescue the Titanic which did not look good for the White Star Line. Imagine one of the biggest ships in the world having to be rescued by a smaller ship. Now that's one reason why they didn't slow down. A second reason is because they were planning on making headlines. Now the headlines were really, really important. This was a chance for them to rebrand. This meant that they were going to be on newspapers worldwide. They were going to be spoken about and their business was going to be booming after this. Because they had actually piled all of the coal into the furnace, the ship was actually going faster than expected, which meant she was going to make it to New York before the date that was set originally. This in turn would have been again incredible for the business and the reason for this is because of the people on board. Speaking specifically of the first class passengers, their wealth combined was a lot and I'm talking a lot. Back then they had a combined wealth of 120 million dollars. Now in this day and age that would have been definitely in the billions if not trillions. To put it into perspective just how wealthy these people were, a ticket for a first class passenger cost £4,000, which is roughly like $4,500. In today's age, that would have been £70,000, which is like $71,000. I told you all that they were rich. Now, this was probably one of the main reasons why the Titanic never slowed down, because these wealthy people were probably going to invest all of their money into the Titanic and the White Star Line in general as soon as they docked. Now having to slow down and run out of coal in the middle of nowhere would have definitely made people think twice about investing so they could not let this happen. So they decided to keep on going at the speed that they were going at and it had deadly consequences. Now you've probably seen the film and the film is actually really true to detail when it says that the ship tried to turn when approaching the iceberg. It's actually really sad here because if the Titanic had just went face on to this iceberg by the bow of the ship aka the front then the front would have been strong enough to withstand the impact and it probably wouldn't have sank. At the beginning of the video I spoke about how important those 13 structured walls were in the bottom of the Titanic and this is really when you guys are going to hear how important that they were. Now in the police reports it said that there was a 300 foot gash in the bottom of the Titanic where the iceberg had ripped through it. This is actually false. This was false information given to the police at the time. The actual size of the hole was 30 feet long, which is the exact same size as that burn mark. Now I can't say for sure that they knew that this hole was actually burned because when you take the picture at the time, they maybe not have seen it. I don't really know but it had weakened it enough to where the iceberg just cut through it like butter. But then again, it's fine because as I said, Thomas Andrews, the designer said it's unsinkable and these 13 walls, as long as they were okay, the Titanic wouldn't sink. As we know, they had covered up the damage on one wall just to make it look pretty. So that one wall out of those 13 went and all of the walls just went like a domino effect, which meant the water come flooding in faster than it should have. Now because of this possible overlooked mark, this actually cost the lives of thousands of people. Most of you know that there was a shortage of lifeboats and it resulted in 1,500 people dying from drowning in the Titanic. The reason for this is because they thought that the first class deck looked far too crowded with all of these lifeboats. There was enough for everybody, but they took them off. Now just to explain how much they thought this ship was actually unsinkable, the lifeboats didn't even have the proper equipment in them that would be needed if the ship had sank. So they really weren't taking this seriously here. So the rule was that it was women and children first put into the lifeboats and no men whatsoever. It was 2019 and a life is a life. Like it doesn't really matter what your gender is your life is important. But back then in 1912, that was not seen like that. Now, if you were a man seen getting on a lifeboat, you were classed as selfish and this would have stayed with you for a really long time. Some of these lifeboats actually sailed away when there was still enough room for other people in them. Now, there was a reason for this. They weren't just being selfish. There was a reason. A day prior to the sinking of the ship, there was meant to be a drill so that the passengers, the crew, everybody knew what to do and mistakes like that wouldn't have happened but it was cancelled. And the reason that it was cancelled is because the crew didn't actually want to disrupt everybody else having fun, so they just left it. During the sinking, the whole thing was so 
unorganized, which I know is a strange word to use, but because they missed the drill, nobody really knew what to do, so panic started to kick in. So while the ship was sinking, it was quite an unorganized drill when everybody was trying to go on the lifeboat. So this is why some of them actually sailed away. It wasn't meant to be selfish. They were lowering the lifeboats so fast that they were actually going to land on top of other lifeboats, which meant people were going to be squashed. So they had to move. Another reason why they had to move is because when a ship is sinking, the suction is so strong. A way for people to kind of understand how strong of a suction a ship would be going down. If you were to place something as big as a beach ball in a bathtub, it would be pulled towards the plug hole where the water was spiraling down. And this is exactly what would happen if anybody had stayed really close to the ship when it was sinking. They would have been pulled down with it. Now with the ship sinking, there were split decisions on board for people that couldn't go on a lifeboat. Some of them wanted to stay on board because the lights were actually really comforting and the thought of jumping out into the ocean in the pitch black was really frightening as it would be. I mean, I would be petrified if that was me. Also, some of them were really screwed because they couldn't swim, so that just was not an option. But for the people that made the decision not to go down with the ship and jump off in an attempt to save their life, there were several reasons that they died. One being the impact of the fall. A little known fact is if you are someone who works above water, so if you're like someone who builds bridges for example, and there's a risk that you might fall, you're told to unbuckle your tool belt or grab your phone or grab your shoe and you have to throw it as hard as possible at the water. So what this is going to do is it's going to break that rock solid seal that forms on top of the water and there's less chance that you die. I mean, there's a possible chance you die depending on the height, but there is less of a chance. I mean, you'll probably like break a leg or something, but at least you'll live. So to put this into perspective, while you were on the Titanic, if you were to jump off, hitting the water would be exactly like hitting solid concrete. And the night of the Titanic sinking, the waves were actually really calm. So nothing was really working to break up that seal. So if you did survive that jump, then there would have been other things that would have killed you. So the second thing that would have killed you if you had chosen to jump would have been hyperthermia. The water was so cold that night that people actually only lasted up to two minutes and the longest was 15 minutes alive in that water. Other than that, they froze to death. And the third reason would have been drowning. Now the people that survived the Titanic and that were in the lifeboats recall hearing the God awful sound of people drowning and they actually said that the most shocking part about it all and the most traumatizing bit that stayed with them their entire life was the deadly silence that came afterwards and this is when they knew that everyone had actually died. So most of you are probably wondering what happened to the people that were left in the Titanic as she went down. By the time she reached the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean which was 12,000 feet deep. To really put it into perspective just how deep the Titanic actually sank, it took about 5 to 10 minutes for the Titanic to reach the bottom of the ocean floor. The bow of the ship hit so hard at the bottom of the ocean it went under 60 feet with a further 40 feet sitting above. So humans can actually only go a little bit down in the ocean before the pressure becomes too much. If you've ever seen the movie 47 meters down you'll know that when they went 47 meters down they had to swim up and then stop a little bit and then swim up more and stop. So most of the bodies that were still in the Titanic when she went down would have actually disintegrated by the time the Titanic reached the bottom. This is actually one of the main reasons that so many people believe that the Titanic should not be brought back up because this is actually a grave site now. Now as much as everybody on that ship's life mattered, there was a few famous faces that definitely got spoken about a little more throughout history and here's just a few of them. Eva Hart. Eva was only seven years old when herself, her mother and her father boarded the Titanic. Previous to boarding the Titanic, when her father came home and, you know, had announced to his whole family, you know, we've got tickets for the Titanic, I'm so excited, this is going to be amazing for us all, we're going to go to New York, we're going to start a new life and our dreams are going to come true. Eva recalls her mother behaving so out of character and completely against boarding the ship. Her father was promising a whole new life over in New York and he was excited. This is what they really needed at that point. But Eva's mother did not shake this feeling. In fact, all the way up till the very day that they boarded the Titanic, she was sure that something awful was going to happen. In fact, Eva's mum was so sure that something bad was going to happen, she never slept a wink during the night and only slept during the day. The night that the Titanic ship was going to sink, Eva's mum was sitting awake and she felt just the tiniest of little bump. In fact, people describe it being so close to when a train comes to a stop, so just like a little nudge. Nothing too much, nothing too drastic, but we both know what this is. This was the point that the Titanic had hit the iceberg and the water at this point had come flooding in.
Nobody knew what it was happening. But even though this bump was so minute, Eva herself woke up as well as her father, and her father went to investigate. So Eva's father went all the way up to the deck to investigate what that was, you know, just being curious. When he came back to the room, Eva remembers her father just looking at her mum and not even speaking, and her mum just knew. Her mum knew something bad had happened. So Eva being little, she didn't want to get dressed when her mum and dad said so. But once she soon realised the tone that her mum and dad was giving her, she realised that something was going on and she had to get to the top of the deck. When they arrived at the top of the deck, they were pretty early. There was really nobody else there. There was a few people up questioning what that was. But everybody was told that they did actually have to leave the ship but they would be back on in time for breakfast in the morning. Now Eva's dad, being male, wasn't actually allowed on the lifeboat so he had to watch his wife and his child go on this lifeboat which I'm sure he was really happy about. Eva's dad actually ended up going down with the ship when it sank. If only there was somebody there that could save them all, there was. Now Eva lived a long and happy life and she swears all the way up until her very last interview that there was a ship so close that she could see the lights were on. Now at the time they never knew what the ship was but as time went on they discovered that that ship was the California ship. They're trying to say that the ship was 19 miles away so they could not see the Titanic but Eva recalls it being 9 miles away or so close that she could see that this was a ship. It wasn't just like lights in the distance. She knew this was a ship, it was that close. In the desperate attempt to be rescued, the Titanic decided to launch their flares in the hope that someone, just someone close, would see them. And the California actually did see them, but they assumed that it was company fireworks at two in the morning in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, bit strange. At the same time that they were launching the flares, there was also an SOS signal sent from the Titanic to the California to say, come and help us, we're sinking. <laughs> And to be fair, there was actually no way that the California would have been able to see these signals because the wireless officer for the California, John George Phillips, had went to bed that night. And they didn't actually see those SOS signals until he woke up a few hours later. And by that point, the damage was done. So if you have reached this point in this video, then you'll know I've already discussed about the lack of lifeboats and the fact that a lot of people didn't survive. Now there was a reason that a lot of people didn't actually survive and it's quite horrific. The wealth came first. A really horrid fact about the Titanic is that all the way up until it was sinking, the company still cared about their image. Now even though women and children came first, I should have been more specific when I said the wealthy women and children came first because a lot of the lower class passengers of the ship were actually locked beneath which meant they were not allowed out until most of the lifeboats were gone so you don't get to decide how much money you have in life because if we could I'm sure we would all be rich but the fact that it really come down to these people dying because of that is just absolutely horrendous and shocks me so much. Now there was one lucky guy who managed to survive the Titanic. Drink up. One man named Charles, I think I'm going to butcher this, but Jochen an Irish name. He actually survived the Titanic because he dealt with it a little bit differently to everybody else. He decided to get wasted and I'm talking out his face drunk and because of this he was able to survive in the water for up to two hours. Now this was mind-blowing. Basically what happened is the alcohol inside him, whiskey to be precise, it was so warm and that kind of burning sensation when you drink alcohol, that was inside him and it kept him warm enough as well as kept him alert enough to survive up in that water for that amount of time. It turns out that he actually went on to serve in the First World War and died. Can you imagine surviving the Titanic and then dying in the World War? It kind of sounds like at this point anybody who stepped foot on the Titanic was really doomed from the start. Captain Smith. Captain Smith was the man in charge of this whole operation. He was the one that was going to steer the ship all the way from Southampton to New York. This was actually his last voyage. He decided that he'd been doing this long enough and it was time to take off his cap. It's rumoured that his last words were, well boys, do your best for the women and children and look after yourselves. It's rumoured that seven minutes before the Titanic actually went under the water, he was seen walking on the deck and holding onto the railings. He ended up going down with the ship, disappearing under the waves. This is really heartbreaking, but it's actually a well-known thing and a mark of respect that the captain goes down with the ship if anything bad happens to it. I'm not saying I agree with this, but it is an unspoken word of the sea. The musicians. The musicians were known for playing their beautiful music throughout the whole entire voyage of the Titanic. There was a book of 60 songs and all of these songs had to be learned in time so that if at any point 
any of the first class passengers that decided they wanted that song played or that song, they had to know it straight away. It's rumoured that as the ship was sinking, the musicians still continued to play and they played a song, a hymn to be specific, called Neither My God To Thee. The reason they done this was because they were just trying to be selfless and they wanted to keep everybody else calm. Now you would think that they deserved a lot of respect for this, but they didn't actually get the respect that they deserved. The White Star Line refused to pay for any one of these people's funerals or the damage that had happened to their family because of their death. They were basically saying that they weren't really passengers, they were there for entertainment and we are not taking responsibility. The families tried to take everybody that they possibly could to court to try and get the respect that these musicians deserved. It did not end very well because the families actually really struggled to get anybody to listen. The unsinkable Molly Brown. Molly Brown, also known as Margaret Brown as she preferred. She'd actually been in several sinkings before, which is actually how she gets her name the unsinkable Molly Brown. And Molly was new to money. She was not all about the fanciness of everything and the tea and the whining and dining, but she was living it up on the Titanic, I'll tell you that. She played this character of this wealthy woman perfectly, but when it came down to it, her heart was as pure as gold. She was actually one of the lucky ones to get on the lifeboat, but she decided that this was not good enough, there was lives being lost, we had to go back. So she demanded that they turn this lifeboat around to go back and save the people in the water, whether they were poor or rich. She was working so hard to convince everybody on this lifeboat that this was the best decision. However, the man in charge of the lifeboat, Robert Hitchens, decided that this was not on and we were not going back and this wasn't going to happen. Those people were screwed. Molly wasn't going to take any of his crap and she said that if he didn't shut up, she was going to throw him overboard, which, iconic. She did actually end up being overruled because nobody in the boat would turn around for her and she couldn't obviously do it by herself or she herself would be thrown off board and no one else would be saved as well. So when the Carpathia rescue ship arrived in the morning, Molly Brown decided that she was going to go around all of the rich and basically do a Robin Hood and give it to the poor. This was going to help them so much. The poor had really lost everything that they had and had nothing to get them started in New York, whereas the rich still had their money. The Singing Piggy Edith Rosenbaum and her Singing Piggy will go down in Titanic history forever. Edith had this little Singing Piggy that was made of paper mache and wrapped in real pig skin and when you twisted the tail it played a song called Mashish. The famous pig is actually what ended up saving her life. One of the men who were helping people onto the lifeboats said to Edith, you know, you have to go onto this lifeboat, we're sinking, this is the only thing that's going to save your life and she just couldn't do it. She was scared, it was too big of a jump and the whole time she was just really concerned about keeping her piggy safe. So the man realised just how important this pig was to her, he snatched it out her hand and threw it on the lifeboat. Because Edith was so attached to this little pig, this actually gave her the inner strength to manage to get thrown onto the lifeboat. So two men picked her up and managed to toss her own. She said that she hunted around the bottom of the lifeboat to look for this pig and she found it. The only damage that had happened is that the pig's feet, all of them, had broken off. Now what's really sweet is that little pig actually saved so many more lives. Edith played that music throughout the night and it helped to keep people alert and keep them calm. Shady business. Once everybody had reached land and the Titanic had sank, that is when the courts started to get involved. Now there was some shady business going on with the courts because there was never a straight answer. One, as I've already explained, the musicians were overlooked, nothing was taken seriously with them, which is completely disrespectful. The Courts were also told that all of the firemen that were shoveling that hot burning coal into the furnace had all died in the sinking. But this wasn't actually true. Some were still alive, but they were silenced. As soon as the Carpathia had picked up everybody and sailed to New York and they all got off at the docking stations, there was people waiting to make sure that every Titanic employee would sign a contract to silence them. This meant that everything that I've just spoken about, whether the Olympic had been switched, whether they knew that, anything, any little secrets that they had heard, they were not allowed to talk about. And I mean, you guys know how scary it is to talk about conspiracy theories and things that like we believe in this day and age. Can you imagine what it would be like all the way back then to go up against this huge company and all of their lawyers and all of the courts to maybe not be believed. And I'm just throwing this out there, but and the possible threat of maybe even being killed if you had spoke about the truth. I mean, I don't know, at this point I'm just speculating, but they went to some extreme measures to make sure that everybody was quiet. And there's a reason behind that, there must be. Recent news. Recently, the Titanic had been visited for the first time in 14 years. This is really exciting on one hand because technology has changed so much in 14 years and we're able to finally see 
HD crisp high quality pictures of the wreck. But on the other hand, it's actually really sad because we were given devastating news. One of the most famous pictures of the Titanic is the captain's bathtub being exposed. But when they went down recently, they discovered that the entire bathtub is now gone. This is proof that the Titanic is actually disappearing faster than what anybody thought it would. We already know that the famous staircase is gone and that most of the interior is gone because it was all made of wood. There's still going to be some things that remain okay, such as crockery, cutlery, pocket watches, perfume bottles, shoes, all of these things have been brought up from the Titanic and are kept in a museum safe. It's said that in the next 10 to 20 years we will be saying our final goodbyes to the only survivor left of the Titanic the Titanic herself. I really hope that you guys, I don't want to say enjoyed this video, but found it interesting. This is a new series here on my channel that I will be doing every single week, just because I know how much you guys love all the conspiracy stuff. I love it too. And I just thought it'd be fun to add to my channel. If you did find this video interesting, then give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't yet already, subscribe. I mean, why haven't you? If any of you guys have any ancestors who are on the Titanic, then it would be so cool if you let me know in the comments below, as well as if you know any other really interesting facts about the Titanic, let me know. So if you are subscribed, then I'll hopefully see you all in my next video. Bye guys. Do you know what you want? Looking for yourself in a bottle of red. Giving you all I got I just wanna know what it's like to be dead